As a paper, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulullah, start by the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, seeking His assistance and blessings to deliver the truth in a way that would benefit myself first and then benefit you all as well. So as I was telling you guys earlier that we will be talking about someone today that most likely none of you have ever studied. And he's a very important person, or she's a very important person, right? And none of you guys have mostly studied him or her. And obviously Allah chose to create that person, so that itself is very valuable, right? I mean, human beings are not created randomly. Allah chooses who to create and chooses what not to create. Every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on His wisdom. After that, we will end by an advice from uh, the most influential person. So there's a guy named Michael Hast, or Hast, right? He wrote a book, uh, 100 Most Influential People in the World. What does influence mean, by the way, first of all? Uh, you change people's lives. Right, okay. Yeah, so because we have to move faster, so influence, yeah, influence is basically he, he had a category and he had a criteria that he, he ranked people based on his influence on their lives, on their way of thinking, on their actions, and so on and so forth. Okay? And so he compiled a list of 100 people, and the, the top one among them is what we'll be, we'll be taking an advice from him that would help me and you as well. And uh, so another thing to compare here is when we look at social media, what we have is followers, right? So you would see somebody who has like 100,000 followers or 200,000 followers does not mean that that person influenced that number of people, right? Because influence means that if he, if he says or if she says, you know what, you know, give up your $100 or give up your salary for a month or, you know, come to this place, they would all show up. Some of them would show up, but not all of them would show up, right? So when we are talking about influence, is categorized by the actual impact, not the verbal or, you know, the, the Twitter or the social media followership. Now, from that person, the most influential person, obviously, when you influence, when you are teaching, and when you are you know, uh, coaching, and when you, when you are a leader, right, you have a lot of stuff that you say. So one of the advice that he said about that advice that we'll be studying today at the end of the class or the workshop is basically something that one of a very great person said, you know what, I'm amazed. I was about to get, like, lose my mind. Such a small advice, but such so profound, I was about to lose my mind. And it's such a sad reality that how many people are not aware of that advice. And from those who are aware of this advice, how many people do not understand it? So this is something that will come at the end. But let's begin our journey. So before we go there, here's another thing to think about. If I were to give you guys, and people who are watching the recording, uh, read out to you a Halal MasterCard number. A halal MasterCard, you know, it's a prepaid MasterCard. I'm going to read out to you. It starts with a five. And it's a gift for you. You can use it as, as you like. Right? What would you do? Would you, would you try to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to try to remember that. Or would you write it down? Would you say, you know what? This is being recorded so I can come back to it. I don't have to write it down. Would you be, you know what? Who knows when the recording will be uploaded? Who knows if YouTube will work or not? Let me just write down that number so I can start using it and start benefiting from it. Okay? So that's why you guys have been provided, you know, workbooks or papers or pen or what have you. So you can take what do you think has similar value to a MasterCard number for you. So make a note of that so you can use it after the workshop. Okay. Now the way this will work is I will be asking some questions that you will be answering. You don't have to tell me the answer. If you want, you're very welcome. Likewise, the listeners, the watchers uh, at home or you know, after post-production, you know, try to interact, take a piece of paper, take a diary, and write down the answers to that questions. What this will give you is it will help you with self-discovery. Okay? You will be getting some answers that are important to you. And if you discover them yourself, hopefully they will be more meaningful to you. And now at this point, I can disclose to you the person that we would be studying today. Can you guess now who that person is? Huh? Michael. No. It's you. 
You are an important person. Each one of you is an important person. Each one of the listeners of Washer, you are an important person. Right? And I'm going to show it to you why you're important. There are so many things that you can learn from your own life that you have been missing out on. Right? And those were some of the key moments of your life that you did not pay attention to or are not paying attention to, which inshallah we will revisit today. So it's you. Yes. So write down your name on the paper. And as I ask you those questions, try to answer those questions. Again, you're learning from your own self. I'm not teaching you what I did. I'm not teaching you what he did. I'm not teaching you what she did. I'm going to teach you what you did. And you will teach yourself. I'm just going to facilitate by asking some questions. Okay? So get ready. Take a piece of paper. Get your pens ready. Put your name on top. All right? You can write down a meeting with your name, whatever your name is. So Ammar would say, a meeting with Ammar. Lessons from the life of Yusuf. Lessons from the life of Bilal. Right? Whatever it is, you write down your name and get ready. Because we don't have a lot of time, what I would do is, I would give you like five or ten seconds. So you don't have to be perfect. Nobody's really watching your answer. Okay? If you guys think that people care about you, you're the person sitting at, at your left or at your right care about you, don't worry about them. They're not going to be thinking about what you did in the class. So be honest to yourself. Write down what comes to your mind. Be true to yourself. I'm going to give you 5 or 10 seconds. Take that time and write down whatever comes to you. Okay, so let's begin. You all have acquired skills, right? That's why you're an important person. Everybody has some acquired skill. Anybody here without a skill? Or, you, or do you think that you don't have any skill? Is there anybody here who think that I do not have a skill? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Can you speak? Yeah. Is that a skill? So it's a skill that everyone has. You can't speak? No, everyone has. has no. So you, so you have a skill that you have, right? You have an acquired skill. Okay, everyone has it. So, the fr so if you go and see a newborn baby, he or she can speak? No. Right? Okay. Anybody else thinks that they don't have a skill? Okay. All right. So you all have the skills, right? Alhamdulillah. Here's what I would like you to do. Imagine if all of those skills were, were to be taken away and you have to relearn them except... Five. You can hold on to five skills that you already have. Everything else will be taken away, and then you can relearn them, obviously, right? So, for example, let's say if you, if you know how to swim, and you are willing to give it up, you can say, you know what, that's fine, I, I will relearn it, right? But if you give up your skill of speaking and communication, that may be a harder skill to learn, right? Likewise, if you give up your skill of walking, Right? And you have to relearn how to walk. That may be a harder challenge. It's up to you. I mean, you are, as I said, like it, it's going to help you discover yourself. So you will be giving up everything, but you'll just keep the five. So write down the five skills that you want to hold on to and choose to relearn everything else on top of those. Okay, can you close the door, please? Okay, let's move on. Next question. Uh, from the skills that you kept, put a number, uh, estimate of how long you think it took you to learn that skill. Put an estimate. Can you the question? So you, you kept five skills, right? So let's say you kept a skill of speaking. How long you think it took you to practice and learn that skill or acquire that skill? Now, what do you learn from this? There's a very important lesson that I would like, I would recommend you learn from this. Okay? So based on the way I, the way I framed the question, do you, do you see where I'm trying to say, what, what do I want you to learn from this? What do I want you to take away from this? Okay. 
for anybody who wrote, or who wrote down a number, right? You, you wrote down a number, how long it took you to acquire that skill. Did anybody write down 60 minutes? Was there anything that was on that list that you learned in 60 minutes? 60? Yeah. Was there anything? No, right? Do you, was there a thing? What? What did you learn in 60 minutes that you kept? Remember, the question was, you have a bunch of skills that you all have, right? So I'm saying, hey, you know what? Give up all those skills, only keep the five. The five most essential ones to you, keep them, and give up everything else, you will relearn them, okay? So the reason I said this, I want you to start you know, noticing what are the five most important skills that you have, right? So obviously, if you're participating properly, right, you have a list of five skills. The next thing I'm going to ask you, put a number, how long you think it took you to learn those, the, each of those skills, right? And then the next thing I'm asking you, that from those five skills, is there any skill that took you 60 minutes to learn? If it was, then, and you chose that skill to remain with you, then, I mean, I mean, we, we have a intellectual disagreement. I mean, I don't think you will be here. If you, choose that, if you chose a skill that only took you 60 minutes to learn and you want to hold on to it and give up everything else, I don't know, man. Right. Why is it? Exactly. So here's the thing, right? The so point is, there's no skill on that list that took you 60 minutes. So everything that is on that list, if you're doing the experiment properly, would have taken you months or years to learn. So the takeaway from this is that important, beneficial, enjoyable, long-lasting things in life do not happen in an hour, in a day, in a month, usually. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's very profound. You're learning from your own self. If, if you have a different observation, I would like to learn from you. Right? These are common things that we human beings have. Now we are learning it from our own lives. That you don't have any important beneficial things, essential things, that you learn over an hour, over a day. The point is that if you want to change, if you want to achieve great things, if you want to achieve greatness, be ready to be patient and invest time. Right? That is why one of the key advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is to hold on to patience. Right? Because if you want to achieve something, you would definitely need that. And this is a, one of the biggest issues that we have, is that we don't have the patience. We want something to happen yesterday instead of today. Like, okay, I want it now. Right? So the things that you can achieve today are limited, are less beneficial compared to things that you can achieve in 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. And this is something I'm not preaching you. You know this from your own life. If speaking is important to you, it took you years, a good year, number of years to speak in a way that, that people were able to understand you. When you were speaking as a baby, people were thinking you are cute. They would laugh at you. You would pronounce words in a very... Uh, innocent but funny way. People would be entertained. Right? They say, okay, say this again. Right? How do you say butter? Right? You would say it you're in a way that whatever the way you were saying it. People would be so amused by it. They would laugh at it. But you would keep learning. You'd keep mimicking your elder siblings. You would keep mimicking your parents until you learned it. You did not give up. Right? But as an adult, you don't behave in the same manner. So that's something that you can learn from your childhood. Likewise, if you have a skill in a sport, right, you learned how to swim, you learned how to run or, you know, play a certain type of sport, it took you time. You know, it wasn't that, okay, I'm going to go start learning how to play soccer and then boom, right? I'm going to, you know, start, you know, scoring in basketball. It took you time. You had to practice, 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 right? So that's something very important to observe, that it takes time to learn key beneficial things, okay? The second observation from here is not to give up, like, you know, you know you can do it, right? So again, when you were learning how to walk, imagine how many times you fall, how many times, you know, people may have laughed at you, your elder sibling may have laughed at you, but you kept trying, trying, trying until you learned, right? So now, this is something very important to remember and observe, okay? Because now, hopefully, this can give you some self-confidence with trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can do it. 
right? So don't just think about what can I do today, but also think what is a potential for me to get done in the five years, right? So this is, you know, one of the guys, you know, phrases it this way that, hey, you know what? People think, people underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years or 20 years, and they overestimate what they can achieve today. Okay, this is very profound. So think about it. Okay, now next thing, we're going to go on a next journey. So this it was a key lesson. I hope you got it. If not, redo the exercise, think about it from your own life, and see what does it tell you about your present. So we are learning from your past to help you learn about your present situation, to help the direction of your future days. So here's another question that I have. Participate, very important, because it's going to give you insight for your own self. Again, I'm going to give you 10, 15 seconds. Write down whatever comes to you. You can try to make it funny, joke about it, but it's at your own loss. What would you do if I give you $600,000? No questions asked. You, you have it, you use it as you like. What would you do? Write it down, think about it, have an answer that should pop up in your head. If you don't have an answer, perhaps that's why you don't have $600,000. What would you do if I give you $60,000? Yes, you say, what would you do? Buy a house. No, okay. Yusuf, really, you, yeah, but okay, so for, for $600,000, you're really buying a house. Yeah, for 60, okay. I'll buy Okay, for, for 60? A car. A car, okay. Okay, what would you do if I give you $6,000? You'll donate it. You'll donate it. You'll really donate it, right? I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not judging you, but if, if this is something that comes from you, then it tells you something about yourself. Okay, good, right? So what I'm saying is these answers are not for me to judge you or say, you know what, you should have invested in this other way. I'm saying you're learning from your own self, right? So yeah, I mean, I expected that some of you would say that, but you're again learning from your own self. And you know if this is what you would do or not, it's something that you know. And as we go in further and further questions, you may even realize that your original answer was not a true thing. You may realize that. Okay, what would you do if I give you $60? I hope you are participating, guys. What would you do if I give you $6? So I give you a $5 bill, and I give you a loony. What would you do with that? You said, what would you do? I'll buy food. You buy food, huh? The bus to school? For $60. Okay. Okay. Now, now here's a very profound thing. So I'm going to give you more time for that. And I encourage you to write an answer for that. Because this is the key message here. What would you do if I give you, or if I promise to give you, $6 every day until you are alive? Until you're alive? Yeah. What would you do? You go to school every day? Yeah, I go every day. Okay. Yeah. You'll save it? Until it becomes what? 600,000. And then? Keep saving it? Okay. If that was your okay, if that was your answer, if this is what you would do, then see there's a very important thing here. This should be related to how you chose to spend your six hundred thousand dollars. Right? See, that's the thing. So you have six hundred thousand if I gave you six hundred thousand dollars, you reacted in a different way, and then we reduced it. So what is six hundred thousand dollars? Those are $6,000 stacked up in a stack of 100 bills, right? So $6,000, put it in a bag, and then you have 100 bags of those, right? What is $6? Okay. 
again, right? So something to think about. Why? Because remember what I was saying earlier. You underestimate what you can achieve in 20 years. So this is very important. Now, here's a very important observation. Look, if you did not have a plan for $600,000, right? If you really have a solid plan, so, okay, let's, let's make it simpler, okay? If you know what would you do with, let's say, $6,000, you can get a car, you know, for $6,000, okay? If that's what you wanted, right, and you are sure that I'm going to give you $6, $6 every day, you would be start, starting to save towards that car. It's like, okay, fine, you know, that's one, one, of, one of my sources of income. I'm going to try to bring in other sources of income as well. Boom, I have $6,000, I'm going to get a car, if you really want it. So this is the difference between really, really wanting something and just saying, yeah, you know, it's nice to have this, right? If you really, really, truly want something, this is what you would be doing, right? Six dollars would not go into, you know, a Coke with, from McDonald's or fries or Popeyes or pizza pizza or whatever, right? That's the difference, right? Because you say, yeah, do I really need to have this pizza right now? No, this is going to my car money. This is going to my house money. Whatever it is, this is going to my school money, right? This is going for my... You know, I'm going to buy a bus. Instead of busing to school, I'm going to buy a bus. <laughs> and then I'm going to take everybody. It's more expensive, no? Yeah. no, but this is very important, guys. See, the way you choose to spend your $6, $60, $600 tells you of what is your dream, what is your goal, and how important it is for you. So there are a couple of things. One is to have a goal. B, to be excited about it, to be passionate about it, and C, to expect yourself to achieve it, right? If you're like, you know what, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm never gonna have six hundred thousand dollars to buy a house. You know, let me just enjoy the six dollars and you know, you know, you know, spend it on games or you know, coke or chips or what have you, right? But if you are certain that hey, you know what, this is what I'm doing, this is my focus, that six dollars is going towards that budget, that that saving, that fund, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now I want you. to, this is very important. But the reason I uh, you know, use money is because it has more value to you guys than, in general, it has more value for us all and the listeners than time. That's why I choose six, right? Because there are 60 seconds in an hour and so on and so forth. So here's the thing, right? If you knew, remember the first thing we talked about was what? Important skills take time to achieve. Right? So let's say if you want to learn something, if you want to produce something, if you want to develop something, if you want to try something, it's going to take you 600 hours, right? or 6,000 hours, or 60,000 hours, just like other skills that you have learned. Okay? Which means if you have something, your free time, or most of your free time is going where? The same way you use your $6. Right? If you have something, that is going towards that project, that goal, that dream of yours, not my dream. But if you don't have a dream, that $6 is going to Coke and chips, and six hours are going in front of TV. Right? But those who have a goal and who, who know they can achieve it, their $6 are going somewhere else, and likewise, their six hours are also going somewhere else. So this is something that I would like you to take away with. So one, do you have a goal? Do you have a dream? Do you have a passion? If you don't have one, is it because you never thought about it? Or you think that I'm not good enough? But hey, if you're not good enough, you're the same guy or girl who learned how to speak, who learned how to walk, how to run, for most of us, right? How to read, how to write. These are things that are very hard to learn. Like, you had to learn A. Okay, this is A. Oh, and can also look like this. And by the way, if I'm using, you know, a different script, then I can, you know, join A with B in this way. Right? And, you know, BAD is bad and BOX is box. You had to learn that. Like, imagine that. Imagine, like, was it easy to pronounce things, to spell things, to know what they mean and to communicate those things? They came in like small incremental stuff and now you are a man who can read, who can write, who can talk, who can understand English. You are able to understand what I'm saying. This is a great skill, alhamdulillah. But it takes time to acquire great skills. Right? And it takes 
courage and knowledge that, hey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me to learn and practice or develop or try or produce what I want to produce. So have that aim. So now I'm going to ask you to do something very important. Okay, everybody, write down. A, again, we don't have a lot of time, so you can redo this exercise at your own time, but for the sake of you know, participation here, write down, you know, write down something that comes to you, that is exciting to you, that you would like to achieve, and you think you can do it in 20 years. You think you can do that in 20 years. Just write down something. So maybe you, so you can have that goal of having that house. Okay, so have something. What can you do in that 20 years? Okay, whatever it is for you, something that is exciting, something that would change that attitude of spending the $6 on Coke and fries towards saving and investing. Something that can change the attitude of spending six hours in front of the TV to using it to read or to practice or to learn or to experiment. What is it for you for 20 years? It wouldn't help you to know what your neighbor has. Yeah. When I get those $6 every day, um, how am I going to eat the food? I'm saving up for the car. No. Okay, that's a different question, that right? The only money you're getting, though? Yeah. No, he said $6 a day, save it up, right? And then he said, don't spend on the no. price. No, I'm saying, okay, what I'm saying, look, you already have your setup, right? Whatever your income is, or whatever way you're getting your money from. And this is something extra, right? So the more important thing I wanted to bring your attention towards is, you know, when you get six hours of free time, right, which everybody, of, uh, all of us have, even people who have a full-time job have a lot of free time. Like I calculated like 10 years ago that how much free time I have with, you know, full-time job, including my vacation time, including my weekends. It came out to be like something around four months, right? This is a rough estimate that I have in my mind. So in a full year, if you take your weekends and you take your... Uh, uh, vacation time, even if you're working full time, you have four months. So if I can invest two months of that four months every year to learn something, you can make a big difference. So the point was, again, you know, taking that money example, the financial example to the time example, which is obviously more important, right? If not, think about it, you know, if, if you have a loved one that died, right, and it was a loved one to you, how much money would you give up to have that person live one extra day with you? Okay? If you did not have something like that, if you had a cat that died, how much money would you give up to have the cat live one more day? Yeah. Zero. Okay. It won't happen. Huh? It won't happen. No, no. Brother, like, just be realistic. I'm, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to help you understand the importance of your day. Oh. Right? in a way that would make sense because our days are very important, right? And we, that's it, like how many times do we take care about it, right? So we are t talking here on Sunday. So you just, you know, you're coming to an end of a weekend. So you had a Saturday and a Sunday. How did you choose to spend those two days, right? Was it like you spending your six bucks on Coke and chips? Or was it, some of it was Coke and chips as, you know, uh, Yusuf was saying, which is fine. And some of that was future investment. Right? Obviously, you're going to eat, Yusuf, right? We don't want you to starve, okay? But if I give you $6 every day, you're eating, you know, Coke and chips, and that, that's the point. So anyways, hope everybody has something for 20 years. What would you put on 10 years? Quickly, what would you put on 5 year? And what would you put in 1 year? Mm-hmm. Uh, education. Okay. Okay. Whatever it is for you, right? I want you to put it down. And B is specific, like, all right, brother, I'm going to teach you a chapter from the book. Boom, goal accomplished, right? So the more specific you are, the more exciting it is for you, the harder you would work, okay? So my recommendation to you would be to write down the answer to these questions when you go home, okay? Because right now we're doing it quite fast. You know, typically it would take more time in the workshop. But anyways, for now, just write down that answer and try to read it every day. This would make a difference, inshallah, and would prevent you from spending all those six bucks on Coke and chips. You say, you know what? That's fine. I can use that two hours. So I can, if I have, you know, 16 hours in the weekend or whatever, I'm going to use, you know, two or three hours to learn this skill or to read this book or to go to this class 
whatever it is for you. Right now, I'm, I'm not preaching or saying, okay, you know, we should prioritize this over this or anything like that. As I said, you are driving the conversation. You are driving the insights into your own life. Okay? So if you don't have the answer to this question, if you really don't have something that excites you for 20 years, for 10 years, for 5 years, for 1 year, talk to somebody that can help you figure it out. And you know what's the most important one to talk to about it? It's Allah. Okay? So your goal should be, if you don't have any, if you don't have an interesting, exciting, passionate answer for this, and we have discussed why it's important to have an exciting, interesting, and passionate answer for this, your goal, my recommendation to you will be, should be that, hey, I would figure these out in the next six months. Right? So if we meet up in the next six months and I ask you this, these questions, you should have something exciting for yourself. And it does not mean that you would have the exact same thing that you want, but you would have a direction that is exciting to you. So imagine if you're climbing, the, uh, climbing a mountain, right? you know that some people have already climbed the mountain successfully, so it's doable, it's not impossible, okay? and you know, I'm going to climb the mountain too. So that's an exciting thing for you. Okay? And then you know for the next you know, day or two, I'm going to take this path. As you rise up, as you climb up, as you go higher, you have more exposure to more paths. Then you can select that, okay, I'm going to take this way, then I'm going to go this way, then I'm going to go this way, whatever, right? It doesn't mean that you knew the whole direction from the, you know, from the ground up. You, you would know that for things that are very well known, but if you're going into new territory, you wouldn't know the full route. But the thing is, at least you have a vision, you have a dream, you have a goal that uh, this is my forte, right? These are the things I want to do. I want to climb this mountain and this mountain. This is what my focus would be, which would mean that if I get free time, I'm going there. I'm learning, I'm experimenting on these two things or these three things. Yes, I need Coke and chips. Yes, I need games. Yes, I need to sleep. But it does not mean that all my free time is going for that, right? Because if I do that, then I won't have any important skills that I would acquire. Okay, so th this is something that you can do. So now if you don't have answer to that question, if you don't have something that really drives you forward, that's fine, that's normal, right? But what's, more, what's, what's not normal and what should not be acceptable is for you to live that, with that reality. Make your goal that, hey, you know what, in the next six months, I'll figure it out. I know what is exciting to me. And the most important thing that you can do, and we'll talk about it now, we are going to the advice from that, remember that we talked about the 100 influential personalities? The top one of the, that personality was, or is, you know, according to that author, is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah. Okay? Now, from his many advices, many nasiha, many hadith, we have taken one. Okay? And we will share this with you. This will help you in achieving that 20 year plan, that 10 year plan, that 5 year plan, that 1 year plan and it will also help you if you don't have a plan but if you want to have a plan if you really want, hey you know what, in the next 6 months I want to have something that is exciting to me that I would like to achieve in the next 5, 10, 20 years okay, so these steps that we're going to share right now will help you in both things this, either how to achieve those things or how to have passionate dreams as well. So let's pay attention. My recommendation to you would be two things. One, read your goals every day. If you have a 20 year plan or goal or aim or dream or passion, read it. Okay, then 10 years, 15 years or five years or one year, read it every day. Okay, and obviously ideally you would like to take that one year plan and you know break it down into months and you know weeks and so on and so forth. Read that and read this advice of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and compare it. Did you execute it? Did you operate it according to that advice? Okay? And then th th see how things change for you. Yes. Sorry? Oh yeah, we, we haven't started that. Okay, we'll do it right now. Okay. So one of the scholars said something about this advice. He said, I contemplated on this hadith and it swept me away. Right? I was about to kind of like lose my mind. I was so amazed. I was so astonished. I was so impressed. 
I was about to lose my mind. What a great loss that many people do not know this hadith and do not understand its meaning. Right? So imagine people not knowing it or not understanding the meaning and on top of that, not even applying it in their own lives. So here it is. So it's narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and he said, One day I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, Oh boy, I shall teach you some words. Okay? So there are bullet points. Let's take it in bullet points. Number one, preserve Allah and Allah will preserve you. Okay? So here, if you want Allah to protect you, to make you successful, to make you blessed, to give you great ideas, to inspire you, to give you right friends, to make right networking connections for you, to give you the right sort of money, to give you the right sort of friends, to help you get into the right sort of university, to get, help you to get into the right sort of program. Okay? You want Allah from His wisdom, from His knowledge, from His authority, from His control to help you. Here is a promise from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who does not speak on his own accord. He speaks, right? So he speaks based on what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala inspires. Right? So he is now talking about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He's making a promise. If you want Allah to do all these things for you, here is number one promise. Protect Allah, which means protects the right of Allah. Give Allah His due. Give Allah the respect, the fear, the love, the attention that He deserves. Okay? So this is a promise. Does that mean that Allah will only bless you, protect you if you do these things? No, I mean, obviously, right, you pray. So sometimes you're like, you know what, brother, I prayed and, you know, I'm still uh, in a tough situation. Okay? So if you want Allah to be like this with you, that you pray and then something happens to you right away, would you like the opposite of it, that the one day that you did not pray, or the one day that you were sleeping in your prayer, or thinking about something else, or delayed your prayer, or did something wrong, or did something haram, would you like Allah to pop out your eyes, or to, you know, afflict you with some calamity right away? Right? So we don't want that. But we are very hasty when it comes to, okay, I did this for Allah, and you know, it's still not happening. So that's the wrong attitude. So anyways, the point being, that this is a promise from Allah. Right? So whoever wants that, Take it. Now, this is a comprehensive thing, right? So what happens if you commit a sin, right? How do you protect the rights of Allah when you commit a sin? The right of Allah after you have committed a sin is to repent, to ask Allah for forgiveness, to make it up by doing extra good deeds, to plan how can I avoid getting into the same sin again. Okay? The next thing he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if you ask, ask Allah. So that's number second, right? So you want something, right? And Allah wants you to ask Him. Are you asking Him? Right? Are you asking Him knowingly that He's listening, He's able to give you what you want? So again, going back to our you know, point of discussion, you don't know what you want in life, right? You're busy playing with things, right? You don't know what you want in life. So ask Allah to tell you, to inspire you, to guide you, to give you that motivation to have something that is exciting for you and that fits you too, right? I mean, I cannot, like, you know, we go for a career counseling in your schools, right? Which program I should take, which university should I take? I mean, they're judging you based on some data and stats that they have. But Allah is judging you with complete knowledge, right? Allah knows it. So imagine if you are asking Allah. doesn't mean that you don't go to a counselor, but obviously, you asking a counselor is not, not equal to you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. So if you ask, ask Allah. So make it a part of your day. Uh, did I ask Allah for what I want? Right? Yes, you try. That's part of the tawakkul to try to take the asbab. But am I asking the one who is able to give? If you seek help, seek help from Allah. Okay? Then he mentions a very important thing. Be aware that if the nations gathered in order to benefit you, they will never benefit you except by that which Allah has ordained. And if they gather to cause you any harm, they will never be able to harm you except by that which Allah has ordained. Pens are lifted and papers are dried. 
Okay, so this is very, very powerful, right? In terms of our fear for other people, you know? What are my friends thinking about it? You know, do they think I'm cool? You know, why are they not liking my post? Why are they not liking what I'm sharing? You know, why are people stop unfriending me? Not seeing my messages, okay? It's just going to give you that instant, you know, that, that boost for that second, but they're liking you does not mean that you will be successful, does not mean that you will be learning skills, does not mean that you will be producing, does not mean that you do amazing things. Okay? Likewise, nothing can harm you or benefit you except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you are a smart person, if I'm a smart person, who, what should my concern be? I would like to make sure that, okay, you know what? My five prayers are taken care of. I would try not to be late to any, any meetings, especially the five prayers. I try to pay attention in classes and workshop if I think they are beneficial, especially, very especially, my meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm saying, Allahu Akbar, I know what I'm saying. Saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-Ala, I know what I'm saying. It's not lip service, because that's the most important meeting that I can have in the whole day. The different narration of that um, also says, for example, uh, Another, another version of that has an interesting piece, which says, Be near to Allah at times of prosperity, and He will be with you in times of distress. Okay? Allah will be with us, inshallah, in times of distress, even if we are sinners. Even if we did not pay attention to Allah and His rights when we were flourishing and when we had everything. Okay? This is what we hold from Allah. But the promise is on this condition, that if you invest in your relationship with Allah now, if you invest in protecting the rights of Allah now, when you are happy and when you don't have you know, challenges, Allah will be extra protecting to you when you are in hardship. Okay, that is the promise. So the smart one should take the promise and start applying, you know, build it, and invest in that relationship. Okay? So if you do something good for me and then you come back and you ask me a favor, you know, I'll try to do it as a general human being, but sometimes I'm not even able to do it. I'm busy with something else. I have my limited resources. But this is a promise from Allah. It's not an expectation. It's a promise. You do it, Allah will protect you and know you in times of hardship or distress. End point. Again, you know, know, realize that victory comes with patience. And this is something that was the first takeaway that we had, that we looked at your own life. That look, you were patient, you were patient, and you learned how to speak, how to read. Okay? It did not happen like, oh, I've been trying so hard, I can't walk. You know? Maybe I can't walk, and I should just give up. I'll just keep crawling, or just like, you know, be in my bed. No, you kept trying until you were able to walk like your elder sibling, or like your father or your mother. Right? So patience, very important. Um, happiness comes after distress and that hardship after, ha after hardships there will be relief so don't be afraid of patience don't be afraid of hardship don't be afraid of uh, um, you know tough times another angle to that okay is also this understanding of that you know once we try and we're asking this person can you help me can you do this for me can you give me money can you give me this 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 this, this? right and then when we, when we realize that, hey, the people that I'm asking or I'm begging or I'm depending on too much or, or my own skills that I'm depending on, they're very weak compared to the power of Allah. Okay? And when you hit that wall and when you realize that, yes, you have to make an effort, but you cannot break through until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates it for you and you truly, truly realize that, that's when breakthrough happens. So it's very important. So the, the more importance that we give to our dependence and our realization of the magnificence and the power and the control and the justice and the wisdom and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the faster we will be able to achieve the breakthroughs. Okay? So we'll summarize quickly, inshallah. First, you have great lessons in your own life. You are not a random piece of flesh and bones wrapped with skin of different colors. It's a choice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to create you, 
to make to to have you born in a family that you were born in, to have you born in a time that you were born in, to have you born in a uh, country that you were born in. Okay, and you have lessons from your own life. One of those is that the things that you learned and are capable of now, that took time to develop. It took you to trust and keep trying until you have it. Okay, and then the importance of how you can have small things combined for a greater effect. effect. Whether those small things is six dollars, stack of six dollars, six thousand sixty, six hundred thousand dollars, or it's you know one hour, one hour, you know, becoming a day, becoming a month, and so on and so forth. Okay? But you would use that if you have a direction, if you have a plan, so you will stack up those things so that they can be gathered together and you can achieve something big, right? But you don't have a value for a small thing if you don't have a bigger plan. You're like, yeah, six bucks, Coke and chips. So remember that. Are you using your free time for Coke and chips or are you investing in it to make it something bigger? If you don't have that dream, if you don't have that passion, ask Allah consciously and consciously try to develop a dream, a passion that is something specific to you. And then remember these advices. Protect Allah, the rights of Allah. He will protect you. Remember Allah in times of prosperity. He will remember you in times of hardship. Ask Allah. When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek help, seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that ultimate control is, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen except by His will. So depend on Him. You know, give Him the right that He deserves. And yes, we forget. Okay? Yes, we forget. So we may behave according to this hadith for the next 10 minutes. And then we may forget, but that's the whole thing, right? So if you have found a gem, you know, keep reminding yourself of it. Okay, try to, try to implement it for the next 10 minutes. If you forget, tr you know, have it somewhere that you can see it. You know, write it down in your wall, you know, stick it up. Have it on your wallpaper, <coughs> wherever it is, and then keep reminding yourself. You know, the more you remind yourself, the more you will act according to it, the more successful you will be. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.